The religion itself, Bodu, means pure light, pure goodness. So that's the goal each day. Everybody, thanks again for joining us for another episode of our one-on-one -on -one interview series. Today, I'm joined by High Priest Roby Gilmore. Roby, thanks for joining us. If you want to introduce yourself, thank you for having me. I am High Priest Roby. Um, I am a High Priest, born and raised in two forms of Voodoo. Voodoo is what you guys call it. I'm a High Priest in Plantation Voodoo from Louisiana, and also a High Priest in Haitian Voodoo from Haiti. Great. Thank you so much. So if you want to, uh, before we get into voodoo and voodoo, um, first, let's start off by why is freedom of religion important? Freedom of religion is very important in the sense of bringing your own self peace, peace of mind, stability in your life, um, because religion actually means to repeat. So to repeat your prayers, to repeat your service, to repeat um, things that you do in your life that bring you peace of mind and stability and also the belief in a higher power. So that's very important according to the individual, how they do that and what works for them. So we must always have freedom of religion. So you're a high priest in voodoo or voodoo. What is voodoo or voodoo and what do practitioners believe? In the religion of voodoo, which that word voodoo was started by white French Catholic slave owners because they spoke French. And when they heard that West African slaves referring to their religion as voodoo because they speak French, they thought, oh, they're saying vie dieu, which means old God in French. And of course, that's just what they heard. So here come the English language, butchering languages along the way like it does, and vie dieu ended up being voodoo, and that's how we got that word. In West Africa, where these traditions come from, it was always voodoo, V-O-D-O-U, or vodun, V-O-D-O-U-N, or vodun, V-O-D-U-N. It was never voodoo. So the religion itself is the, a simple setup. We believe in one God. And under God, we believe that there are intermediaries known as the Loa or the Orisha. And if you want to know who are they, think of the saints, except the African version of the saints. Um, and we're an elemental religion. So that means we do try to live off the earth. We grow our own herbs. We grow our own food. We grow our own you know, vegetables and we try to maintain a mental, I guess, a mental forwardness of living off the earth, serving the spirits of the earth, and maintaining the earth. We're like a cleanup religion, if you want to think about it. Vodou is a religious and spiritual practice with, it seems like, a ton of misconceptions around it. A stereotypes oh. as well. Yeah, most people think of voodoo dolls or zombies. Where do these misconceptions and stereotypes come from? The misconceptions, oh my goodness, they come from two major places. Hollywood, how you doing Hollywood? And also from racism, which started uh, from religious discrimination. Um, the French wanted to convert the slaves to Roman Catholicism when they came to the new world. So how do you convert people into your religion? You tell them what they knew already is wrong and also beat them and hurt them if they continue to do it. They find safety in doing it someone else's way. So they teach their children that and bam, those kids misconceptions started happening. We sacrifice chickens and drink their blood. We kill children and hang them from trees. We worship the devil. There was no devil in the religion in the first place, but incorporate something negative from your religion into theirs. And then you can convert them back to yours by giving them that fear. So common misconceptions include movies like 007 where they have characters that say they're a voodoo priest or priestess or voodoo spirit, and then you see them dressed up in all black with bones around the head and glowing red eyes and a white face. All those things were created for two things, capitalism in the media and also from racism, from French slave owners trying to convert their slaves to Catholicism and not the slaves maintain their own religion. So how does voodoo shape your life on a sort of day-to-day -day basis? Each day I pray to God and I pray for everyone around me. Um, being an herbalist too. So when we get sick, we, you know, we, we know how to make our own medicine bottles. We know, uh, we already have the herbs growing in, in our yards anyway. Um, we know what's indigenous to the area and what's not. So 
you know, there's a new campaign going around telling everyone to eat your invasives. So we have a lot of wild garlic that is invasive. We have a lot of wild, a lot of things that are invasive that are edible. So as a voodoo priest, in order to maintain stability, we use those. Um, each day is a new thing because there's always something different that you can actually do with a plant or with a prayer or helping the homeless or feeding children or teaching them about life. The religion itself, Bodu, means pure light, pure goodness. So that's the goal each day, kindness. And one thing people don't understand is that kindness, being kind to people is so addictive. Keep being kind to people and see how you fall in love with it and how addictive it can actually become. That's true voodoo. And what does the future of voodoo look like in the U.S.? Woo, we are blowing up. Oh, my goodness. There are so many African-American people leaving the Christian religion because of discrimination, racism, homophobism, transphobism, and they're going right back to the African traditions. So we're our spot is getting huger and huger. They tried to kill us off in the uh, early 1900s. But now that people have more access to information and history, they're starting to make different decisions than what a lot of people are making. And now they're going back to the African traditions and we're not alone. A lot of the African traditions include Palo, Ifa, Kandamble, Obeyala, Kumiki, Banda, Santeria, Mayombe. We're all the same. The only difference is they'll speak a different language and may use different herbs because of their locations. But we're growing up, like we're blowing up and growing up. And a lot of us are now taking offices in politics and a lot of the entertainment industry, a lot of them are starting to come out. Danny Glover is a high priest in Ifa. Forrest Whitaker is also a high priest in Ifa. Erica Badu has traveled back to Africa to find her roots in that part of West Africa and switched over. So we're blowing up and we have a, we are securing a lot of places in the world just from people going back to their roots. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. So before we go, uh, uh, High Priest Roby, do you have any final thoughts, any message you want to get out there, anything you want to plug or promote? This is sort of your free speech moment. I would love to just tell everyone that, hey, guys, we don't stab pins and dolls that originated in England. We do not cast black magic spells. I got an email today from someone asking me to make their ex-lover obsessed with them and to come back to them. We don't do any of that stuff. That stuff is, that was a marketing capitalistic ploy started by people in our traditions in the 1980s so they can make some money. So my message would be this, always be kind. And if you cannot be kind, don't go around people so you can be unkind to them. Wake up every morning with a mission to always better yourself and better the people around you. That's what true voodoo actually is. So I am myself am, uh, a tour guide in the city of New Orleans. You can definitely find me in New Orleans. Just comment if you want to have a conversation with me face to face. Congo Square is where my family congregates every Sunday. You're invited. Just come on out there, find me, find my family, and let's have a conversation. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. And I appreciate your kindness. So thank you so much sure. for giving me this opportunity.